Upstairs at Fralix show one oh what? <laughs> Hold up. My brain exploded. Upstairs at Fralix show one oh seven? Real one. Oh, in the meantime, can I get you a cup of tea? Why'd you go fuck yourself? I pass that suggestion along. Oh, you do that. Rawhead Rex sounds like a toy that Hasbro would, would develop. Uh, Hasbro presents Rawhead Rex. He chews your head off. No, Rawhead, no. He chases ugly British people through the woods. Rawhead Rex, no. You See, I was, th I was thinking Rawhide Rex, you know, oh, rawhide, rawhide bones for dogs named Rex. <laughs> rawhide Rex for your dog. You know, that's what I was thinking. And introducing new pig's ears. Here you go. Uh, it, this is a, it, well, I mean, it's a monster movie, right? I mean, this is like a bona fide monster movie. I wasn't yeah. really expecting a monster movie from the mind of Clive Barker. Because, you know, when I worked in the video store, we had copies of this movie. And, they, you know, people would always rent them. And, I, was, <laughs> you know, I never got around to seeing it. and Because they sold it, obviously, on Clive Barker, especially after he got famous. You know, because Rawhead Rex and, and but the other one that we're going to talk about, Transmutations, were made uh, at a time when nobody knew who Clive Barker was. He had just published his Books of Blood around that time, 84, 85. Yeah, Books of Blood just got published around that time. So he was he was pretty hot. So, like, he was a hired gun to write these screenplays. And I don't think either one of these were based off any source material. Like, he just wrote them off the top yeah, of his I think, head. Yeah, I think the actual story was that the director, uh, what's his name, George P Pavlo? Yeah, George, George Pavlo met him at a cocktail party and was like, hey, on the stage you write horror, you know, you want to write me something, you know, and, and they're like, okay, sure. It's like, why the hell not, you know, like, I'll write you a couple of movies and then look what happened. <laughs> yeah, he, he, well, I mean, like, I get, you see, the thing is, I was never, I was, I, I remember seeing Hellraiser a long time ago when it came to video, I was like, Hellraiser, whatever, it looks interesting, Pinhead and all that, very, very powerful imagery going on with with pinhead in that and it was like you know and a lot of people really dug it because they were kind of into that kind of stuff uh, i i watched hellraiser and then and then there was another movie that came out a couple of years later called nightbreed but it barely got like any kind of a that, that movie really had a lot of problems with the studio for some reason he had to go and cut it a few times and i don't think the studio put much behind promoting it they didn't because, well, Morgan Creek, they weren't a big studio yet. Like, you know that Morgan Creek later on, all their stuff came out through Warner Brothers. Like, Warner Brothers had an exclusive deal with them at the time, or after Nightbreed. But right in the beginning, like, you had Young Guns, you had Nightbreed, and um, there was maybe one or two more movies in there before they exclusively signed on to work with Warner Brothers. Right, right. So, I mean... Nightbreed never got a big push. Like, I, uh, one, I'm, I've been waiting to tell this story. Uh, one of my teachers in high school was in college at the time, and they had a premiere of Nightbreed in Chicago. And Clive Barker was actually there. And mm. everyone hated the movie. But my teacher, whose name was Mr. Jacobson, he actually met Clive Barker and told him, look, I thought this was an amazing movie. I don't care what anybody else says. Give this movie a couple of years. It will find its audience. Well, it definitely did have a visual sense to it. And, and Barker has a visual sense. Hellraiser is phenomenal to look at as, oh, yeah. you know, visually. It's just, it, the movie, didn't, when I first saw Nightbreed, it didn't make any sense to me. It really didn't make any sense. And it was probably because it was one of those early cuts. And, yeah, the, the, the movie uh, suffers as a result of some of the editing that's going on in there. There's kind of, I don't know. We're, start, we're starting with, are we starting with, we're, yeah, we have to go, chronologically so we got to start with transmutations first right yeah we have to start with transmutations all right this is this is a first of two movies written by clive barker and directed by george pavlo barker had only started writing professionally the year previous with the books of blood from which it, actually yeah rawhead rex does appear as a story in, in the first book of blood a, as well as Candyman, lord of illusions and and quicksilver highway were all uh, adaptations from stories in that book actually visually i think Transmutations is much more uh, interesting looking than than Rawhead Rex, because there's a certain there's, it has a very 80s tone to it. There's this uh, synthesizer driven music and pulled back ponytails and casual white suits, and you've got this guy uh, Roy, 
there's some kind of a private dick, apparently. I'm, I'm not really sure. Yeah, that, that's the one thing I don't like. They never said who or what he was. Yeah, he was just painting. When he's introduced, he's just painting, and he gets visited by uh, by some goons. One of them is played by Art Malik, right, who was the bad guy yep. in True Lies. Crimson Jihad. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, uh, and he's he's being hired by professional supervillain Stephen Burkoff to find a missing girl. I believe her name is Nicole. And the bad <laughs> the bad guys actually there are these bad, but they're not really bad. Okay, again, this is it, it, parts of there are parts of Nightbreed in this movie, and there are parts of Hellraiser in this movie. So there are these weird mutated creatures, and they remind me of low budget Cenobites from Hellraiser. <laughs> so. <laughs> I mean, like they're all that's dressed. A, that's a really good way of putting it. I mean, I would have said low budget night breeds, but okay, I'll take low budget Cenobites. They, they, they got the black leather on, you know, and they kind of look like hell. <laughs> and, um, you know, once we get down to it, the whole thing is about them. They're out there and they've been made this way by Denholm Elliott. He's like a mad scientist who turns his patients into mutants, but the drugs he uses to do it are addictive. So he turns his test subjects into uh, into junkies. So it's kind of like this weird Dr. Moreau thing. But then again, the drug he's using, isn't it to kick them off of heroin? I, I, yeah, yeah, but again, that's just, you know, I mean, methadone was originally <laughs> de developed to get, get people off of heroin, too. It didn't do a very good job of that, either. No, no, not at all. And if you've seen Train Spotting as many times as I have, it definitely doesn't do the good job. Remember that scene in Train Spotting where he he tries to get into his toilet and he goes into his toilet and he winds up underwater and it's a very weird thing yeah because that was that was he was trying to get opium like or opium suppositories yeah yeah and and i'm just like wow that was like i mean the whole movie made sense but i don't i never understood the illusion of that of that scene in that movie i never understood like was he already just, stripping balls or yeah was, yeah i would say so i mean didn't he see himself on the wall and then his head turns completely around and talks to him and all that yeah the whole thing is meant to be this kind of rep uh, symbolic representation of what it's like to kick drugs just like saw i mean saw is a movie about basically it was a it was a, a former heroin addict lay one l his his this was his take on on trying to kick heroin was what he wrote as saw and that's very a, interesting it, it's uh when you look at yeah you, you, you when you when you watch the movie armed with that fact it it, it is very realistic i've, I've been I've read articles from um, heroin addicts uh, who who kind of liken that experience. It's kind of very it's very similar to chopping your own leg off with a handsaw to get to get, you know, a leg lock off of you. You know that kind of oh, thing. Oh jeez. Uh, transmutations could have uh, you know the problem with it, it it is it's just too long. It's too long. It's too slow. It could have been tightened up with some with some editing, and it could have been much better than what it was. Yeah, there's there's nothing worse than watching a slow burn movie with no real payoff. I mean, there's this whole bit with Dan Holm Elliott being menaced by these by his creations, in a sense, and it just goes on forever, like 20 minutes. And I'm like, you could have cut this down to five minutes, man. I agree with you on every count. It was it was way too long. Like the whole time I'm watching this movie, I'm waiting for this this good buildup of tension, and I'm like. I, I'm not, I was I just wasn't feeling it. I wasn't taken into it like I could have been. And you know, bear in mind we're all in the age where you know we can pause the movie and pick up our phones or we get you know get on with our lives, we, do things. Yeah, we get on with our lives. But you know, I I made sure to be, behave my, myself. You know, I put my phone in the other room and I watched both of these movies back to back. No phone, no distractions. You know, and I just could not be taken in by transmutations at all. Yeah. Like there there was nothing redeeming about the movie. I mean, granted, like you said, it was a pretty movie to look at you know the special effects were pretty well done the acting was good i'd be very but, interested to see um like a like a high definition transfer of the movie because the know. the only because we watched these two and i watched them as vhs rips and they really didn't look that great now uh that one transmutations i had to because there is the only way you can watch it is laserdisc or vhs uh in this case i watched it off of youtube but rawhead i watched on a 2k uh, 2K Restoration Blu-ray. So. All right, and then we move on to Rawhead Rex. Of course, like we said, Hasbro presents Rawhead Rex. He, he rips your head off. He's a fucking horrible creature or whatever. But he's <laughs> this. This is just is just like this movie is a tribute to really ugly British people <laughs> being on screen, and it's like you can tell that a British person did it because they don't care, right? Say, like, oh well, we all look that way anyway. The the, the only good looking people I think are, are probably David Dukes and his wife, and that's you know, I'm giving them very I'm being very liberal about that. But uh, 
Uh, David Dukes plays a writer, unfortunately named. He's not the he's not the Ku Klux Klan leader. He's a he's actually a respected actor, an American actor actually, and uh, he has a family. And he's some kind of he's a writer and photographer, and he's researching pagan worship sites. And not coincidentally, a goofy looking monster springs from the ground to wreak havoc on ugly people. And, <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, the reason. If, you know, you look at American World from London, right? John Landis directed that movie. He wrote it. He shot it in London, but he's an American director. So he's going to find the most, you know, good-looking people he can find to put on the screen because he knows that people have to watch it, right? In reality, if you're in a hospital in London, you're not going to find a nurse as pretty as Jenny Agutter. So, I mean, but, the, the, you know, and, and all the other people in the movie are very, are, 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 look much different than the people in this. This is like this weird kind of like, you're out in the sticks, I guess. You're in Ireland or something like that. You're on the road really far away, and there's there's just a, a lot of um, people. That is the creepiest sound I've ever heard. You're completely dropping out. Fucking shit. It's kind of a cheesy, kind of a schlocky movie, too. So... It, it, but it, and it's not anything like you, that you would. I don't think this is a movie that you would enjoy if you're really like into kind of like Hellraiser kind of stuff. No, but you were comparing this to American Werewolf in London. That's what it, where we jumped off at. Kind of, just just only in the sense that uh, <laughs> um, Landis uh, get cast good-looking people, whereas you know, all these people are really just not. <laughs> but I, but you I, gotta, I you gotta give the director credit. He went for authenticity. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. He gets props for just like you know. You look like hell and you're British, you're in my movie. <laughs> I was thinking about Rawhead Rex, the monster itself. He reminds me of the little creature that comes out at night and steals Drew Barrymore's breath in Cat's Eye. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, yeah. I'd, I'd say he's a lot more uglier, though. He's he's kind of like a troll or, I guess, an ogre or something. Maybe he's of the Shrek variety, if you will. Yeah, the one, <laughs> the one in Cat's Eye is definitely of the Shrek variety. He's more mythical and... Like playful, though he's got like the freaking jester dangles on his head and shit. That tiny little sword, you know, that's like so cute. But yeah, then, that uh, <laughs> Candy Clark finds him. Like, what the hell is this? You know. Yeah, and it's, I mean, and then the cat. I mean, that's just another conversation for another day. But like, I guess you could compare him a little bit to that, like just a more grown-up, menacing, bloodthirsty version, I suppose. I don't know. I found. I, you know, I found I found him goofy. I found him a bit goofy, and and with all the stuff that actually happens, I mean, a, a child dies, you know. Right. And it's just, and I was thinking that the little girl that wanted to use the bathroom pretty much sealed that kid's fate. They had to stop, and for some, I don't know why, in broad daylight, this this creature is out there murdering people, uh, murdering a child. I mean, it's yeah. um, it's just, it just it just kills at random. It just picks nobody. But you're right. You'd figure it would just kill at night, not during the daytime. The, actually, yeah, when because at nighttime, it's scarier. You right. know, in broad daylight, it's really not. And then at the end, when he pops his head up, you know, mm. and we see that thing that you showed me, you know, obviously. I, you know, the thing is, if you're not looking for it, you're never going to notice that this, that this mask has been basically casually draped over a man's head because you can see his teeth when he opens his mouth. There's, and I, I thought when I was looking at it, it kind of reminded me of Alien, you know, like he has an inner mouth or something, you know. Maybe it comes out and, you know, just grabs somebody's head. You know, it was it was one of those things that it had to have been done in post to where they just said, hey, um, we want to end this movie on a jump scare. Can't we, like, grab a piece of, let's say, let's grab a piece of black construction paper, coat it with KY jelly, and just shove it in the mouth so that we don't see that mouth, you know? That's what I would have done. Probably, I mean, that, that's opinion. that's your lazy film studio wanting. Oh, you know, it needs to. It's it's the A's. It needs to end on a jump scare because that's what the audiences want. We need a jump scare right at the end because everyone else is doing it. I guess you know, but like Carrie did it first, you know. But we yeah. have copy Carrie. Right, right. Because that's the um, only way this movie's gonna make money. So there was. Did this movie make money? I mean, I can't imagine that it did. Basically, sure, I mean, I, there's there. I you know, I don't even know if there are any figures out there. I know. Uh, we both. Uh, what we didn't mention was Charlie Band's Empire Pictures released to the both of these stateside. I mean, That's these, right. These were both British productions. They have their roots in the UK, but they were picked up by Empire for distribution out here. But you know, it's it, quite it, possible. Uh, it's quite possible that no other no other uh, releasing entity wanted it, and that it Band kind of bought it at auction or something like that, just I mean, so he could have product. He'd try to make some money off of it, but not too much. I mean, the weird thing about both of these movies is, like, 
with the except you know with the exception of Rawhead, the real lack of availability that both of these movies have had over the years. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you got to figure Transmutations is still stuck on Laserdisc and VHS. Now it may have gotten a release uh, in the UK under its title Underworld. Right. Because that's that title, but we haven't gotten one in the states. Now Rawhead, that movie has had the bigger cult following over here. Because let's be honest with ourselves, Rawhead is the better movie. It's a better movie in that, you know, it, it actually manages to tell a story that makes um, sense. And also it's 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 much better edited. So it's very it's very compact. It's very tight. It is. Now, the weird thing about this movie was, OK, you had a Laserdisc and a VHS release. But do you remember that really obscure DVD release that it got like right in the beginning of the format? Uh, vaguely, vaguely. It was I, I'm, I'm only acquainted mainly with the, with the VHS box because I remember seeing it so many times. Now, it was released in the U.K. several times because, again, it's a British production. Here in the U.S., we only got a single release through Artisan Entertainment, and it was like this uh, open mat, full-frame version. Right. But, man, it was going for stupid money. Like, I remember I had to get the Laserdisc because, like, I didn't want to spend, like, $70, $80 on this damn DVD. But then, luckily, you know, Kino Lorber, they said, okay, we got the rights to Rawhead Rex. We're going to do, like, this 4K or 2K restoration from the original negative. And you know what? Yeah, that was, that's, that was money well spent right there. I think I spent mm. 13 bucks on that. Uh, one more thing. I think my favorite bit in the movie is when this girl and her boyfriend are running through the woods. And she's running, and she thinks she's running with him, but she she's actually holding his oh, severed holding hand. his hand, the severed hand. That was awesome. That's a that's a very that's a, that's kind of a very 1950s 1960s B movie thing. But she was holding. attractive, though. She was kind of attractive, I guess. I guess she's probably you know I would call her maybe a London Seven. I guess. Which I yeah. guess it's probably a, more along the lines of an American Four or Five. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I it's, it's it's you know, I mean, you, it's you know, we we raise better looking people here in the United States, and we we do terrible things to them in movies. <laughs> I know we do horrible, terrible things. Uh, now uh, I have invented a new scale for this episode. I call it the Meridian Meter, and um, Rawhead Rex. Actually, we're only going to use the Meridian Meter in times when it when it's called for. Uh, if we're talking about really good movies, they don't really belong on that meter. Now, Rawhead Rex gets about a, about a six on the Meridian meter. I'd give it a me personally. I'll give it a seven because I think it's a slightly better than better than average movie. But I'm not going to disagree with your six. Okay, uh, and that'll I guess about do it. What what is Transmutations getting on the meter though? Oh Jesus! If if I were to do that, Transmutation somewhere uh, probably lower, probably a three. <laughs> I'd say a three or four. Just for production value only. Say a three. Remember, uh, Meridian is the worst in this scale, and a movie like Street Smart would be the best. Mm. This so is we're true. talking about a complete universe between the two movies. This is true.